What's up YouTube? Welcome to Jang's Food Workshop. I'm Chin and this is my mum, Chu. Hello! Hello and welcome to the channel. We teach you how to do Chinese takeaway food at home as well as some Malay and traditional Chinese dishes. We have a lot of experience in Chinese takeaway food and we really do know what we're talking about. Having said that, that having said that, there are many ways to do these dishes, um, but we what we try and do is show you the, the standard. One place will always be different from the next, but this is like the, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh... Average. Most common. Common, yeah. Most Not common average, way of yeah. doing it. Yeah. Not common. the best, the most common. Yes, common. Um, common, that's the yeah. word. Yeah, common. People say, why don't you do the best? Because there are thousands of channels out there claiming they do the best. And to be honest, a lot of takeaways aren't um, doing their best. They're just <laughs> making money, aren't they? Which is true. Just like McDonald's. Can't fault it. Tastes good. But yeah. it, that's the way it is. Yes. So that's what we do. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're scared you're just that's right no i'm not scared no yeah no i'm not okay that's good tired yes a little bit oh. yeah gone past my bedtime now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've been to work in the morning oh, yeah. can we tell them what time we're doing this yeah no. of course yeah it, it's quite late now been to work and it's then come back it's very late yeah never mind you are the most important keep watching we haven't told them what we're doing yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing then, Mum? Tonight we are doing sweet and sour sauce to yeah. begin with. Yeah. And then we're going to do uh, sweet and sour king prawn bowls. Okay, yeah. So That's if you. The, oh, yum. I yeah, like that. You do, don't you? you yeah. Mum's been looking forward to this one all day. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had my dinner yet. The last time I had my lunch was at about half past 12. Then I come home, I have a banana. About six o'clock, I have a banana. <laughs> and now I'm waiting for it. Okay, that's... Yeah. That whole monologue was weird. Um, we are doing, like mum said, sweet and sour <laughs> king prawn balls. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. I love it. So we're going to teach you, good, we're going to take you through the sweet and sour sauce and then the king prawn um, process. Okay? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's about it. And we'll yeah, get on with it. Yeah, we get on with it? Yeah, we yeah. shall. Pardon? We shall. Yeah. Right, so we're going to start off with 660 millilitres of water. This should make around just over one litre of sweet and sour sauce, so it's half the size of the recipes. And some of you might not want to make so much. So I made a smaller batch this time using the same recipe. I just divided it by five to make a fifth of the um, recipe. I've said the word recipe too much. We then have more water. No, I'm joking. This is. Um, malt distilled white vinegar and we have 330 millilitres of this got a nice little beaker here um, we have 100 millilitres of double concentrated um, orange squash or orange cordial in some countries it's called 15 grams of ginger sliced 15 grams of star anise literally a strip of cinnamon bark you don't want the whole thing you literally just need a little bit of um that four cloves finely chopped or you can crush them we've just finely chopped them six or seven cloves 50 um, milliliters of tomato puree half an orange a good size orange that is a tablespoon of vegetable oil 100 grams of white sugar and this chemical red food coloring um, now we sell these in little jars on our website, Hera, actually this one is. They're 175 I think at the moment. But yeah, so you can get most of the ingredients, spices on our website. This you need a very little amount of, it, it will, a, a little will go a long way. I dropped one the other day on the floor and I spent another two hours trying to get the colouring out. It was insane. But yeah, so that's the final ingredient for this sweet and sour. Now the prawns, we have um, 20, these were quite large actually compared to normal. We have 20 raw deveined prawns, so they're shelled as well. Now if your prawns look pink, 
they're cooked. I get a lot of people say they tried the prawn toast and then they couldn't get the sesame to stick and whatever. And then they sent me a photo of what they bought and they have actually bought pre-cooked prawns. Prawns are like gray before they're cooked and they're not pink. 220 grams of green dragon self-raising flour. Again, we always have a couple of know-it-alls who go, there's no difference between this. Actually, the ingredients, there are far less in it. It's a purer, finer flour. You can try and replicate it with zero, zero grade flour, bicarb and baking powder, but it's not the same because those people who do try it like that and then buy the Green Dragon and just say, yeah, it's the Green Dragon's far superior. It's literally been designed for this purpose. If you can't get this anywhere in your local shops, do stock it on our website, chinandchew.com. You'll also need a separate 100 grams of the Green Dragon flour. You can actually use plain for this, but we always use the Green Dragon. And this is just uh, to coat the, the King Prawns, uh, so the coating sticks slightly better in the batter quarter teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, and finally two thirds of a teaspoon of MSG. This is optional, by all means don't add it if you don't want to add it, but takeaways will add it, and that's why a lot of the time you can't replicate the flavor at home, it's because of this stuff. Uh, you will also need probably around two to three liters of oil to fry the chicken balls in. The sweet and sour sauce is probably one of the most simple sauces to make, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's good. What, let's get what? Get, get the sauce ready. <laughs> just put that in there, yeah? yeah? Wait until it's warm, all right? In got the oil. The oil doesn't have to be hot for this stage, so we're just going to put the um, ginger in right away. Yep. And the spices. We're going to leave the garlic to a little bit later because we don't want it to burn. So in goes the five spice. I oh, don't five spice, star anise. And cloves and the cinnamon. I am very aware that we use quite a lot of star anise in our cooking, especially in our sweet and sour sauces. If you don't like that flavour too much, just cut it down by a couple of, um, or half to be honest. Yes. We just very much enjoy the flavour. Yeah, star anise is really good. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it's said to be like a, um, I don't want to, 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 to claim anything, because that's just what if you've got like a stomach ache, it's very good for. Oh, natural remedy. Yeah, yeah, a natural remedy. Yeah. For stomach ache. Yeah, like somebody well, like. You make it into a tea. Yeah. Just boil the water and drink it. Remember, we don't have medical degrees here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just uh, giving you some. It's just passed on. What we've heard. On. Yeah. Family advice. Yeah. Right. So you. When your garlic starts, uh, not garlic, when your ginger starts browning a little bit, it's time to put in your ginger, no, garlic. garlic yeah. Why you can, can I go smell the... When you can, can smell the smell aromatics, basically. Yes. And in you goes your garlic. Your... I nearly said ginger again. I want to turn it down a little bit so it doesn't burn. Yeah. Mix that up. It smells amazing already. Yes. What's your favourite smell? What? You mean food? No, just in general. Uh, I think garlic, isn't it? Yeah, garlic I love garlic. And ginger together. Oh my god. Garlic, goodness. yeah. Well, garlic yeah. for me. When your garlic starts browning, mm. it's probably time. Well, it's, now it's time to add everything. So in goes the water. You can hear that water now. Vinegar. You want to put it onto a high yeah. heat. Yeah. Your oranges. Your orange squash. Um, your tomato puree. Tomato puree. Sugar. Give it a stir. Keep stirring it. Multitask. We do have a cookbook with all of this with this recipe in. Again, that's only available through our website at the moment, which is chinandchew.com. We have actually sold out our first print runs. We're waiting for the second run to be printed and delivered, which should be out in April. But with world affairs at the moment, it could be a little bit longer. Okay, and then in goes your not all of it, just a tiny amount. Oh, literally. Did you see that? That was less than a pinch, I reckon. And it's already turned up red. Use it very, very sparingly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this to the boil. When it's boiled, we're gonna let it simmer for about 30, 40 minutes. Yeah. And then Bring it should it be done. This, this will keep as well in the fridge for a couple of months, so don't worry about it going off. So we just thought we'd show you this bit quickly. All we've done is pass it through a sieve and let the liquid fall into the bottom. That's your sweet and sour sauce now. Yeah. This can all be discarded. Yeah. Tell you that you need to get your oil hot. There's about two liters there in that in that wok. Uh, that's hot now, and it has to be over about 180 degrees 
is perfect for this. If it's too cold, they won't puff up very well. So it's all a bit of a, a process. So yeah, so you've done all the, we've done the prawn bit. Yep. Now we're gonna make the batter. So I'll show you there. So what we have is you have 300 milliliters of lukewarm water and your green dragon flour. Okay. Yep. And this process has to be done fairly quickly because it all, it's chemistry at the end of the day. Do a bit at a time, all right? Doesn't quite matter so much if this is lumpy, it's just... Don't worry about the lamp. Yeah. You might want to get a cloth handy to wipe off your hand. Yeah. Because it get a bit uh, Sticky. messy. Okay, so we're gonna put this on back onto the heat. Okay, so we move this oil to the heat. We've brought these prawns over to here. And you're gonna place the, your 100 grams of flour into the end of the tray like this. Yeah, you get your prawns and put it in to mix it. Not mix it, to dap it, to coat, coat it. it. Coat it. And you put it to one side. Doing this one so your prawn will stick to the batter and also keep your prawns keep your meat uh more moist yes i hate that word as we've been through before yeah. now you need to do this all in one go you can't really sit there and let it like what's the word sweat out yeah sit sit yeah thank you and your hands get like, quite uh sticky a lot of flour you should go like that just give it a wrap just like doing a facial exfoliate it's called <laughs> you're not only getting cooking tips, you're also getting beauty getting tips. Getting health and beauty tips. This, what more can you ask for? Alright, so here we go. Let's see how. This isn't. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and hot now. Yeah. These aren't like the um, chicken balls where you have to use a specific technique to get a ball shape. These are basically just dip and cook. Yeah, dang and dip. Dunk and dip. Yeah. We also have a separate tray here to put the cooked kim prawns into. Yep, yeah. you get a few at a time, yeah? Prawns cook really quickly. Yeah, that's why you can use a really hot heat as well. Yeah. But in you go. If you want your batter thicker, make a thicker batter by using less water. But um, these will be quite... I think prawn balls is nice with slightly... Crisp. Yeah, thinner yeah. batter. I hate prawns. I love the flavour. Hate the texture, so I'm gonna eat these, but um, I won't enjoy it. Should I put all of them in? Yeah, go on. But some is going to cook quicker than the other one because of the timing you put it in is different, isn't it? Yeah, you just got to go on color, really. Yeah. If you're that worried about it, just probe them and make sure they're over 72 degrees. So from when they go in, they, they, they're gonna take about five minutes. So you, you see there, the older ones are browner, and the newer ones are much lighter. So roughly five minutes. You don't want, really want to cook them any longer because they'll overcook and then you get a chewy prawn, which yeah. isn't nice, is it, Mum? No. Okay, so we're knocking them here to... Separate get... them. Yeah. If you if you like, you can turn it the other side, yeah? So you get brown both sides, but... I personally can't stand um, using metal cooking utensils in non-stick, but if you're not touching the bottom, that's fine. This, right now, is causing me to have a bit of a freak out. I can't stand it when you see someone using a fork and they're stirring the food yeah. in the pan. What are you playing at? This is my bugbear. Any thoughts on that, Mum? Oh, just keep, I'm um, concentrate. <laughs> just keep turning it a bit, all right? You can see some are browner than the other one. Okay, so you can see the browner ones we're taking out now because they're cooked and because obviously someone in at least a minute after the others You've got to let them sit and cook a little bit longer. The annoying thing about prawns is I may hate them and they are wood lice of the sea. Um, they do smell fantastic. And they taste good as well, it's just the texture. I just can't stand the texture. Do you have anything like that, Mum? No, I don't. No? No, I like them. I like prawns. No, I know the prawns, but they're, is there like a sound or a texture you can't stand? No, I like it's crunchy. I don't like... Uh, <laughs> forget about the prawns, Mum. I know you've got the prawns on your mind and that's all you want to think about right now, but is there like any sort of sound or noise or texture you don't like? doesn't oh, matter anything. anything. I can't think of anything just yet. Right, Please. they're all done now. 
and we're going to put these to the side and make the sweet and sour sauce. We've got to be quick, otherwise the uh, these will start to sort of go soft. So you want your sweet and sour sauce? Well, this is the small. What? This is small. Do you want pan. a smaller pan, Mum? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should I make some? Is that enough? Isn't it? Yeah, that'll be enough for both of us. So we're gonna. We've literally just. This is sieved sweet and sour sauce that we made earlier. We're gonna thicken it with the potato starch slurry, and all we're gonna do is take this to the boil. When it starts boiling, we're gonna add that. It's boiling. Go a bit at a time, so you don't want it to be too thick and too thin, yeah? Yeah, you put too much potato starch in and you're literally going to make glue. Glue. You can use corn flour, but corn flour cooks out a lot quicker. Potato starch is superior. Can What's you it? see that? And that's, to me, that's pretty much a perfect consistency. Maybe a bit thicker, but yeah. we're not going to... Just let it cook for a little bit, it might get thicker. Yeah, yeah that's perfect now. So there we go. Right, so we always get a lot of comments saying there's no pineapple juice in your uh, sweet and sour. That's because there isn't really pineapple juice in sweet and sour. Um, the pineapple is put there as a kind of false economy, making you think you're getting a bit more than you, you actually are. There's no actual pineapple juice. Uh, just try the recipe out and you'll see, and you'll understand that there is no uh, pineapple juice in there. So that's what this little prop is for. We're gonna try these now. Um, I hate the texture of prawns, but I'm gonna give these a go. And normally I actually do like these, like scampi, I hate I hate fish, but I love scampi, so let's go. So, yeah, let's get that sort of end products. Looks really nice, right? Yeah. Go on then, you first, Mum. Okay. Mm. I want some of them. Yeah. Mmm. That flavour is amazing. Mm. The texture is gross. It's been so hard to eat. I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that. What? The flavour is amazing. The texture is that like chewing on your ear. It's so annoying because I really enjoy that flavour. Mm. But anyway, uh, there we have it. Sweet and sour king prawn balls. The recipe can be found in our cookbook, which is available on our website to pre-order for the second print. We've only got signed copies left, which are a little bit more expensive than normal, but um, the pre-orders are actually cheaper than they would be normally. So I'd suggest get your pre-order in if you want one. Yeah, you'll be able to make this. Uh, and they are good. Yeah. Or just watch the video over and over again. Yeah. Remember, oh, well, actually, no, let's go. What is the flavour of these? We always forget to go through the flavour and that's the whole point of us eating it, we just end up eating. Mm, because we're too busy eating. Yeah. What flavour? Yeah. Flavour is crispy. Um, um, I've never had a crispy flavour before, but that's interesting. Flavour, you can smell the vinegar. Yeah, it's, it's sweet and sour. Yeah, sweet and sour. Prawn is very subtle. Yeah. And it's highlighted really well with the um, The sweet and sour. And the, yeah. So you like big prawns? Oh my god. Me personally, I prefer a thicker batter. So if you want a thicker batter, just add, I'd say, 50 grams more flour, oh. and it'll be much, much thicker, uh, stodgier batter. That's my favourite. I think just, I think prawns you don't need too much batter. Oh no, that's fine, Mum. Yeah. If you don't want too much butter, you don't have too much butter. I like them thick and stodgy. Actually, I don't like prawns, but I mean, if, if I could choose, that's what I would do. Anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Um, we've now got a review channel that's up. We've got a couple of videos on there, and we're going to review a Tesco's, probably a Tesco's sweet and sour dish at some point this week. Oh, yeah, Tesco or. We'll probably go Tesco's and Morrison's because they're right next door to each other. Yeah. Like, or maybe, well, I only said sweet and sour because we just made sweet and sour. <laughs> just coming in our mind straight away. But it could be a chow mein or whatever. Yeah. Whatever is. Um, it's available that day when we go. Yeah. Sometimes the shelf is quite empty, isn't it? It is, yeah. We're, we live in Minehead, so the Butlins crowd come down and empty and, the shelves. Yeah, and... they do. Yeah. But whatever we can get, we will. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Mum? Happy cooking. Happy eating.